this fucking montage. But <laughs> <laughs> so again, if people want to come to the side, just to rearrange, please don't like stand on formality or the um, or the rows. There is space here. In the It's really a pleasure to be at events like this. Um, the project I'm going to talk about in a lot of the work I've done in the last two years has been inspired by um, my desire to understand my relationship and the legacy of HIV, AIDS, and activism and art. Um, so it's great to be in a room, um, like an intergenerational context, people I really admire. I mean, I remember in a room with numbers of act up, I get this sort of like chill. Um, I, you know, I owe you guys my life. It's really great. So. Um, as Amy mentioned, um, I'm finishing up my uh, master's degree in curatorial studies at Bard College. And what I'm going to be presenting tonight is my recently completed, completed thesis exhibition. Um, the program is a two-year master's program, and you do uh, a, cura a curated component. It can be an exhibition or a publication, and you do a written thesis. And um, I'm going to start by just kind of showing you some images and a little bit of video from this show. I'm going to explain. Is, is this on? Um, and then explain um, how the product developed. I um, think it has some bearing on what we've been talking about today. So, um, the little official spiel I'll read you. Uh, Questions of queer embodiment in a post-AIDS culture are posed in a multimedia installation by the Baltimore-based collaboration duo. So, this is, uh, Malcolm Lomax and Daniel Wickerham. What are the forms, affects, capacities, and connections of the queer body? How does it respond? Sorry, I don't know why this is. I don't want to. S yeah, okay. Sorry. Um, how does it. Uh, what are the forms, affects, capacities, and connections of the queer body? How does it respond to the legacy of AIDS, no longer experienced as an overt crisis in the gay community, but no less constituted of its practices? How does queerness inhabit the landscape of online avatars, social networking? viral video, and multiple forms of digital being. Merging digital and analog technologies through a practice informed by performance and appropriation, Duo presents an environment that reflects on and embodies an emergent sensibility, the becoming viral of the digital queer. So I'm gonna show you some images now of the completed exhibition. Um, when you walk in the gallery, you're confronted by this screen. Um, sorry you can't see it that well on this projection. Um, it's a kind of opaque plastic screen with a number of digital collaged elements printed on it. You can't really see it so well when you enter the gallery, but when you walk behind it into the space, it's sort of backlit from the other galleries and um, has this kind of gem-like glow. There are um, two large wall-size um, video projections. On the floor, these monitors are trailers for those videos, um, which I'll show one of. And then there's some sculptural elements in the background, which I'll show you some close-ups of um, in a second. There's um, a shot from the inside, the, the projectors and the audio was all on the back wall, so you would stand in the back to hear the videos. Uh, this is coming in from the rear of the gallery. These are some of the sculptural elements. And just to give you a little sense of the videos. I'm going to play one of the trailers for the larger videos. Six months. Like? Vicky! Great! 
Did, did you just uh, walk in, or were you, were you listening all along? Don't ever call me again. Wow. I, I guess you're home. Of this video um, isn't conducive to seeing some of the text. The blue text that you saw in there are, you'd recognize it, some of you maybe feel were larger, are quotations from Derek Jarman's Blue. And at the end, there is a, um, an at Derek Jarman that you do in a, a sort of Twitter feed. Um, I'll explain in a second where that comes from. Yeah, it's, it's. So I'm going to um, just talk a little bit about the development of the show. Um, and what we'll play is uh, images from the installation with the artists. Um, so this began, my research into this project began actually before I came to CCS. I was really interested in, in um, returning to the AIDS crisis, to reading the literature and the theory and looking at the art and the histories, to really um, reckon with the legacy of an era that I didn't experience personally. Uh, I was born in 74. Um, I sort of sexually came of age in the mid-90s. I remember the end of the AIDS crisis, but myself and my peers never really went through it. And um, as I got older, um, and AIDS, as we, as we know, it sort of changed, um, I was haunted by um, this sort of legacy. I mean, this idea, I would read these memoirs of, of people describing, you know, people in this room maybe had this experience. Um, men would write that all their friends were dying. Everyone they would know, know were sick or dying. And I, I couldn't wrap my head around this, and I really wanted to understand um, Personally, what, is, what has been the legacy of this, not just in terms of the persistence of HIV and AIDS in our lives, but um, the kind of legacy of the art and the activism. Um, so when I got to the curatorial program, I thought, okay, how can I address some of these interests in, in a kind of historical return, but also understand what's at stake for my generation curatorially? Can this be a curatorial project? Is there some way that you could manifest this dialogue, this idea of a genealogy of AIDS, um, and different notions of virality through an exhibition, through a project. And so what I began with was a kind of um, mixed media, um, multidisciplinary sort of essayistic exhibition where I was going to combine um, work from the era. I was going to do a screening of Germans Blue, commission artists to do new work, and just to create a kind of um, temporal dialogue, fairly straightforward between kind of work from the 80s and 90s and contemporary work. Um, and, and my role would be to kind of mediate this dialogue between the past and the present. Um, two of the elements that I was always interested in using were Derek Jarman's Blue and the work of Duo, Dan and Malcolm, who you're seeing in these images. Um, they're 24, they're even a younger generation than I am, um, so they're removed and their experience is, is even um, further removed from the crisis than mine. And I thought it would be extremely interesting for me to again, sort of curatorially mediate this position between Jarman's generation and Duo's generation, and I'd be the sort of pivot. And the exhibition context in my role as a curator could be to um, sort of manifest this dialogue and see um, what connections could be made. I had this insight um, based on uh, nothing other than just sort of, I guess, this, um, the tease of the idea that um, two things happened simultaneously in the mid-90s to late-90s. One we enter a kind of post-AIDS culture, and I know it's a, uh, a, a controversial thing to say, but meaning that um, AIDS, as it was understood by ACT UP, as it was understood in the 80s, um, changed in the mid-90s with, with the introduction of antiretroviral treatments for those privileged to have them. Um, we didn't end AIDS, but we entered a kind of post-AIDS culture, and at the same moment, there was the rise of internet culture. We had the rise of, of kind of viral identity. We speak about viral video. And it was really interesting to me to think about gay bodies, queer bodies, passing at the same moment from kind of you know, the end of AIDS, I say this in quotations, and the rise of this kind of displaced um, viral culture. Um, this crazy project was way too unwieldy. I had this tiny little budget. It was like impossible to do. And so I thought, um, why don't I just invite duo to respond to blue? Jarman's Blue. Um, and the idea that they propose is when we subtitle Blue, you know, which is crazy because the whole thing's about, you know, just this blue screen um, of Jarman's, you know, this kind of monochromatic image of Jarman, his sort of his eyesight as he's going blind and seeing this blue field. Um, so this was the, the starting point for the show that I ended up doing with them is um, Duo responding with Blue. 
Now these guys being 24 year old like crazy artists, they went off in a completely different direction. Um, traces of Jarman and Blues stayed in the show, but that initial invitation turned into something much more complex, um, appropriately sort of viral, I think. Um, the thing that Dan and Malcolm were most interested in in Blue that they, they built from was this idea that Blue gives you Jarman's eyesight. Jarman's going blind um, from complications from the AIDS. We have this blue monochrome he's kind of reflecting on um, his life. And so they started playing with this idea of doubling and surrogates um, and avatars and this idea of giving people eyes and giving people identities, projecting these kind of identities, um, which also is, of course, something that they um, their practice being very digital, very online based, um, is part of that culture as well. Um, so as the project developed, it, it, my role became less and less about creating this kind of historical dialogue and really um, supporting their project. It moved away from this sort of more genealogical framework, although I dealt with that in my, my written thesis, um, toward really sort of committing to this new generation of queers and, and what they were invested in and seeing how they would respond to this invitation. Um, from someone who's a generation before them who's responding to a generation before that. Um, so it ended up sort of being enough for me to set the stage and, s and see where it went. Um, I know it's hard to understand this work because it's, um, you know, it's video based, it's hard to see. Um, I think ultimately what I wanted to do and what I achieved in the show is not sort of represent or reflect on queer culture, but help to produce it. Um, that my initial impulse about wanting to think about my relationship in this larger genealogy with these artists, um, the emphasis changed more toward creating um, a new history, sort of historicizing my own moment and historicizing their moment. Um, and I think I'm done. So, oh, really? Yeah. Um, yeah, maybe I can, I have a couple more minutes, maybe I'll go back. <laughs> Yeah, so the, the, some of the blue tones you see in here are um, directly taken from Jarman's blue. I see if I can get a shot of this screen. No, not so much. Um, yeah, and, and in these videos, there's text running from, from Jarman's film. Um, yeah, and I was, I guess, um, I got in a lot of trouble presenting it to the graduate committee, this idea of sort of virality that kept teasing me that this was this like cheesy postmodern trope. Um, but I was really fascinated by this idea of um, how the idea of virality and the trope of virality has changed, how it has meant different things to different generations of gay men. And it seemed like no one had quite um, tried to think through this moment, this late night. We, we had thought about the rise of digital culture and the sort of end of, it, of um, the beginning of a post-AIDS culture but I thought it'd be really interesting to, to work with them at that intersection and really try to forefront that in the exhibition. Um, the title, which is like sort of unabashedly of um, someone from the 90s, is from the Pixie song, Break My Body, Hold My Bones. Um, and there's a book, some you may know, by Eric Rolfs called uh, Dry Bones Breathe, which is a sort of critique and analysis of what he calls post-AIDS culture. Um, so yeah, we can talk more about it maybe later. Thank you.